Welcome, hello. It's Thursday Hi. devotion time. Woohoo! <laughs> Is it Thursday already? It's Thursday already. There we go. Glad to have you all with us. We're going to continue in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3. Um, so we're just going to get started. I'm certainly hoping, by the way, I mean, we can keep going in 1 Corinthians, but there's a lot of chapters in 1 Corinthians. I, I'm hoping <laughs> that we can get together and do some of these instead of planning out 16 weeks of oh, right, right, right. continuing quarantine. <laughs> you see where I'm going with that? All right. Anyways, uh, apparently I'm the reader today. Is that right? I, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Jason read. He's our guest reader today. I'm so grateful for homeschooling, by the way, because seven weeks ago I couldn't put two words together, and now I can. Read. <laughs> I mean, my fluency is going way up. First Corinthians three. This is Paul writing to the church in Corinth. <clears throat> but and this is out of the message. But for right now, friends, I'm completely frustrated by your unspiritual dealings with each other and with God. You're acting like infants in relationship to Christ capable of nothing much more than nursing at the breast. Well, then I'll nurse you since you don't seem to be capable of anything more. As long as you grab for what makes you feel good or makes you look important, are you really much different than a babe at the breast, content only when everything's going your way? When one of you says, oh, I'm on Paul's side, and another says, oh, I'm for Apollos, aren't you being totally infantile? Who do you think Paul is, anyways, or, or Apollos, for that matter? Servants, both of us. Servants who waited on you as you gradually learned to entrust your lives to our mutual master. We each carried out our servant assignments. I planted the seed, Apollos watered the plants, but God made you grow. It's the one who plants or the one who waters who is at the... Uh, it's not the one who plants or the one who waters who's at the center of this process, but God who makes things grow. Planting and watering are menial servants' job at minimum wages. That's what makes or what makes them worth doing is the God we are serving. Mm -hmm. You happen to be God's field in which we are working. Mm -hmm. Or to put it another way, you are God's house. Now the translation uses the word temple. Using the gift God gave me as a good architect, I designed blueprints. Apollos is putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there's only one foundation, the one already laid, Jesus Christ. Take particular care in picking out your building materials. Eventually, there's going to be an inspection. If you use cheap or inferior materials, you'll be found out. The inspection will be thorough and rigorous. You won't get by with a thing. If your work passes inspection, fine. But if it doesn't, your part of the building will be torn down and started over. But you won't be torn out. You'll survive, just barely. You realize, don't you, that you are the temple of God, and God himself is present in you. No one will get by with vandalizing God's temple. You can be sure of that. God's temple is sacred, and you, remember, you are the temple. Don't fool yourself. Don't think you can be wise merely by being up to date with the times. Be God's fool. That's the path to true wisdom. We've talked about that in the last couple of weeks. What the world calls smart, God calls stupid. It's written in scripture. He exposes the chicanery of the chic. The master sees through the smoke screens of the know-it-alls. I don't want to hear any of you bragging about yourself or anyone else. Everything is already yours as a gift. Mm -hmm. Paul, Apollos, Peter, the world, life, death, the present, the future, all of it is yours, and you are privileged to be in union with Christ, who is in union with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that last line. All of it is yours. It's like, mm -hmm. there should be a period right there. I just love that. All of it is yours. And you are privileged to be in union with Christ. I mean that. I wish we could just own that every day, every moment, because that that is huge. That is huge for our relationship. So, uh, the other thing that for me it spoke to me is when we're talking about the watering uh, with Paul and Apollos and and uh, planting the seeds and watering. And I and I just I take it personally. I think about my parenting. I can also think about my role at the church and um, and just seeing and give, giving and giving and, and sharing and being that servant but not seeing the growth and a lot of times I expect the growth where's the growth where's the growth I did this I did this why am I not seeing the growth and I gotta I need to realize that that is that is God God is going to do the growing as long as I continue to be the servant and just do my part at either planting the seed or doing the watering 
let God handle the growing. And I think we want to, it's the, I want it now. I want to see results from, from my kids or results from people at church I'm working with or wherever. Mm -hmm. And, and you may not ever see those results. Um, but God is doing the growing if you stay diligent in your planting and in your water. Sure. So, so one of the questions that comes up, and we were talking about this before we, uh, went on, who was Apollos? Well, mm -hmm. Apollos was another evangelist, a contemporary right. of Paul. We don't have his writings in the Bible. Um, and you got to tap into my ignorance here with no one really, if we have any writings at all, they didn't make it into the Bible. Apollos wasn't competition. Right. And the people of Corinth apparently were trying to set up these personality cults. Well, I follow Paul. Well, I follow mm -hmm. Paul. Mm -hmm. And Paul's going, doesn't, it doesn't yeah. matter. You're following Jesus or, or don't put my name on it, period. And that to me is particularly relevant yes. in a right. day when it's right. all about, well, who are you following? Right, right. Uh, all of social media is built around following. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to think about that when I post stuff. First of all, I don't want to post things that are objectionable. And I tend to, you know, steer away from certain subjects that I know are just going to be inflammatory and not mm -hmm. really serve a larger purpose. Sometimes it's just fun around the house. But I always wanted to be in line with what I believe about who Jesus was and is, what he talks about, what he teaches, and to see that as a link in the chain, right? I don't want people to convert to me right. or to you yeah, right. or to C3 right. or, you know we're not in competition with other churches right. exactly. that preach Jesus that's that's not the point we got a whole lot of other competition yeah. going there and that's what Paul's bringing mm -hmm. his readers back to that's what he's bringing us back to yes. is to stay focused on what's most important and where you're getting your wisdom from we right. spent a lot of time on that the last couple right. Days. right that's good Yeah, I, I mean, I just, I just, I, looking back at the, at the, uh, I think it's about verse 19, says, be God's fool. And I, I just resonate with that because I make a lot of silly mistakes and do a lot of silly things. And I just like, man, I would rather be God's fool than the wisest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's just an encouragement to me. Uh, and I know we, like we said, we talked about it last week. It just continues to encourage me. To, to continue to be God's fool. You may not get it right all the time, but continue to seek Jesus in all that you do, and uh, and he's going to love you, and he's and it's all yours, as he says in the end of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good so, stuff. So here's another thing we've mentioned before, but he, he really draws on these examples. He uses two different metaphors mm -hmm. of planting in a field, and the, the, you know, the farming process. Mm -hmm. We get that around here. And also building, which, again... Gosh, I've lived here 20 years and it doesn't seem like there's been a day where we haven't seen some new building popping right, up, right. housing development, whatever, you know, construction. He uses both of these mm -hmm. examples to talk about the fact that we are part of a process and that we need each other, even though God's definitely got a part that he holds a corner on the market. We can't tap into his his uh, results. You know, that's that works up to him. But but we need each other, and he describes us as being this, this field or this temple as a group that are that mm -hmm. God's spirit. Yeah. Some translations will say in you, but but a, my study has elicited that the spirit is among you. It's a shared power. I don't hold it, and you don't get any, mm -hmm. right? They're like toilet paper, right? Well, I got mine, and you don't get any. The spirit dwells among. So you see, it's a shared toilet paper. No, 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 I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit belongs to groups of people as well as it is a personal experience. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's why we're doing things like this. Is because there is power in staying together and mm -hmm. seeing ourselves that way. Not yeah. just these offshoots running here, running there. But that anything that's happening under the or built on the foundation of Jesus Christ is making something wonderful when we picture those efforts as united yeah. and that's why it's good to be working in partnership with some of the organizations mm -hmm. around here right and coming up with things ways that we can sort of help fill a need mm -hmm. uh, I read in the news yesterday one of the churches in town kind of became the hub for a second harvest distribution mm -hmm. and hundreds of cars right fantastic yeah wow, that's great yeah. <laughs> go for it you know 
yeah. and the things that we can do. And so right. this idea that when we're working together and seeing ourselves as more of a team, then some really, really mm -hmm. good stuff happens as we as we share what God mm -hmm. has already, like you say, given us freely to to use. Right. So it's right. perfect. Works out great. That's awesome. Any other any other nuggets from this or oh there's always nuggets. Oh, there's always nuggets. <laughs> Look, let's see. Yeah, so Paul, we were talking about this before we, we got on here too. Paul seems to be a little bit heavy-handed, but he loved the Corinthian people. But again, he took high, high ownership in their growth and development because he started their church. So as he's True. writing back, that would be like if Mark right. went on sabbatical or went mm -hmm. on some trip and he was, let's say he was in like Africa for six months. If he wrote back to us and he'd heard some things that he didn't much care for, he probably would shoot straight. Right, right, right. You know, right. Paul was a straight shooter. He wasn't going <laughs> to fluff and flower right. and stuff. But it's not because he was mean or didn't care. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, there's room for that. You know, if we read things in the Bible that are like, oh, man, that feels a little close to home, well, don't, don't get all twisted about it. Yeah. Let it speak to you. Yeah. And if the shoe fits, wear right. it, you know. Well, and we're supposed to be accountable to other believers, right? And you know, we know this is a believing church. Yeah. So he's able to just get get right to it, not beat around the bush and say, yeah. hey, look, you're just drinking milk. Let's let's get some meat into you. Yeah. So, But the one that really seems, and we'll read it as we go further in First Corinthians 2, the one that really seems to chap him is people who want to rally around special interest groups mm -hmm. and personality cults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, he's very... Um, Argumentative yeah. about how destructive that is to community, right? And how the haves and the have-nots ought not separate, and following this person or following this person ought not separate. The things that divide. There's any number of things that, that could, could divide yes. us right now, right? And Satan would love to use exactly. those things to accomplish sure. that. Yeah. And when we have a worldwide pandemic that could very well. Destroy. I mean, I think about businesses that just really aren't going to come up uh, above water after all this is mm -hmm. said and done, right? The church better not be that. Can't be that. Right. But it, we can't be passive about that mm -hmm. either. There has to be something, some sure. bigger engine yeah. driving all that. That's so, good. Anyways, that's the that's yeah. the accountability, the encouragement, is to make sure we're we're doing the things that people who are together do even if we're not physically together. Mm -hmm. There's that spirit of connection. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. checking in with each other, using this mm -hmm. as a tool in your house, sharing it with other people, inviting people on mm -hmm. Sundays, participating in small groups, all the stuff together that we can do, even if you're just reduced to one of these. Yeah. And you're at home by yourself, and you really can't go anywhere. There's a way to be together. Yeah, that's great. And it and you'll see it throughout C3, especially if on our Facebook page and stuff, you just see all the different things we're doing, uh, ways we're resourcing, ways we're encouraging. Uh, and it's just exciting to be a part of the, the global church, really, not just the Tri-Cities community, but globally, the different things that are going on uh, that churches are the center of, the epicenter for. And uh, it's just it's exciting to see what God's doing. So well, thank you all for joining us this Thursday. And uh, thank you, Jason, again for helping me out with sure. this. <laughs> and we're thankful too. You know, we—I don't know if we'll have enough time on the other side of this to unpack all of the really, really mm. cool things we hear about. Just yeah. simple acts of kindness. Yeah. And I think you know. So I hope that we're encouraging each other. We—we mm -hmm. we certainly are getting encouraged. And I hope this is of value to you, because uh, right now we're just sitting in an empty room talking to a phone, six right. feet apart. You know, when's the last time we shook hands? Oh, it's been months. It's been a while. <laughs> so. But, um, yeah, no, we love just being there for each other and to pray for each other. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. You going to pray for us? Oh, I better, huh? <laughs> uh, thanks, Father, uh, so much for your word. Thank you for Paul and his ministry and, and everything he's teaching us. Uh, just continue to guide C3, continue to guide the global church in, um, in what to do uh, in this and, and how we can show people who you are through uh, what's going on in our world. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this tool uh, called Facebook and called the Internet uh, that we can use, God. Uh, I pray a blessing on everyone today. 
In your precious name, amen. Amen.